Today, we're going to take a look at hacking together some holiday lights with an ESP8266, some NeoPixels, and some ping pong balls on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. MicroPython is a really easy language for beginners to learn. And one of the most exciting things about it is the ability to easily control hardware. Now today, we're going to have some fun hacking together some holiday lights using MicroPython code. And to do that, we'll need a microcontroller like this ESP8266, a NeoPixel strip, and some ping pong balls, which you can find links to in the article in the description. Now, once we have all these things together, we're going to be using Jupyter Notebook in order to control the code. So we can prototype blocks of code, and then once we find an animation we like, upload it to our microcontroller and use it as our holiday decoration. Now, if you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. But in general, we're just going to be affixing these with a hot glue gun. And again, there's some trial and error to this. You can either poke a hole in the ping pong balls and mount them, which provides a lot more light, but actually allows them to be crushed. Or you can actually just mount them directly on the way that we have here. That part's really up to you. We're going to be more digging into the code today. So let's get started. Now, to get started with this guide, I'm going to assume that you watched some of the other guides we have on setting up MicroPython, and you've already flashed the MicroPython binary to your board. Now, if you haven't, make sure you go back and watch that. It's a pretty simple process, but you'll need to do that before we begin. Once you have it installed, then we'll need to connect our NeoPixel strip to the board that we're working with. And there's three different wires. There's one for 5 volt, one for ground, and then a middle one that goes to our signal. And on the D1 Mini, like I'm using here, we'll need the 5 volt connected to 5 volt, the ground connected to ground, and then we'll be connecting the, I believe, the D4 pin, which is actually general purpose input output pin 2 uh, to the signal, which is where we'll be sending all the different commands for the NeoPixels to change colors. So once we have it plugged in, we can type on a macOS computer ls slash dev slash su in order to find all the different devices that are connected via the serial port. And I can see here that the one that starts with the W is usually the one that you want to actually access because the other one, for whatever reason, just doesn't seem to work. I don't know why. So I'm going to type screen and then the port that the board is connected to and then 115200, which is the baud rate we're connecting with. And we should see some gibberish. And that could be because I'm connected via also a Jupyter Notebook. But in general, if we see something here, then we probably have a MicroPython REPL going on. And we're going to be using Jupyter Notebook in order to manage this. So I'll try one last time. Yeah, I'm connected to Jupyter. So if this happens to you, then you're probably connected to MicroPython on another source. In this case, I'm connected via Jupyter Notebook. So to get started with that, you can type Jupyter Notebook. And I already have one running, so I'm not going to start a second one. But this will go ahead and open a, a Jupyter Notebook uh, just welcome screen. You can then start a new MicroPython project. And if you haven't watched our guide on adding a MicroPython kernel, you can basically do all this line by line if you want to in the MicroPython REPL with screen as I just showed, but I don't recommend it. It's a lot easier to do this sort of development work on Jupyter. So let's go into our Jupyter notebook. All right, so our first command is going to be to just go ahead and connect to this. And I'm going to copy and paste the serial port here to make sure it's the same one. And this changes all the time. If you have a dongle like I am blessed with, then you have to constantly change this if you plug into just a different USB port on the dongle, um, even if you connect it to the same USB Type-C port. So this number will change frequently. And once we click Run, then we can see we are connected to the board and it's ready to run. And again, if you haven't installed Jupyter Notebook, you can still follow along with this and you can copy and paste the code either into your own script and then upload it, or you can just run it line by line. But Jupyter is a super simple way of doing this. So, all right, now I want to also just include this. Um, this is how we connect to Wi-Fi on an ESP8266. We can use this code in case we want to download a library that maybe isn't already on the board using UPIP, or if we need to do something like maybe read an animation that we've uploaded to GitHub. Well, I'll run it, but I'm not going to actually use this function today because we don't really need to connect to a Wi-Fi network. So, all right, let's go ahead now and take a look at how we manipulate NeoPixels. Now, NeoPixels are pretty easy to work with. 
First, we need to import some things in order to do the sorts of animations that we want to work with. And I will note that we have a problem here with the random function. In general, MicroPython doesn't have a great random function. So if we want to just generate a number from, for example, 0 to 255, which is off to fully on for each of the different colors that are available, red, green, and blue, then we don't have a good random number generator for that. So in a little bit, we'll have to write our own, but it's pretty simple. So for that, we'll need to include the existing random module, the math module, the time module, so we can do timing of our animations, the NeoPixel module, and then the machine module, so we can work with the pin input output. So first we'll create a NeoPixel object, which is just NP equals NeoPixel dot capital Neo capital pixel. And then in parentheses, we have machine dot pin with a capital P, and we tell the program which pin we've connected the NeoPixel to. And as I said, we've connected the signal wire to pin two, which is a D4, I believe on the D1 mini. And we are also indicating how many NeoPixels there are. In and in our strip, there are a total of 10. All right, so now we've supplied the information we need to initialize a NeoPixel object, and this is where we can create our random function. So we're gonna create a randint function, which will give us a random integer, and it will take the lower number we want and the upper number we want, and it will generate a number that's a random number that's in between them. And the way it does that is it figures out the gap between the two, if the gap is equal to zero, it just returns the lower because it means it's the same. And then it'll go ahead and return the random bytes. Uh, it'll do a math function, which is basically a log two, whatever we supply it with. And then in the end, we add the lower, which is a long way of saying we basically get a random number from whatever the lower end of the scale is all the way to the higher end of the scale. So this is useful because if we want to add flickering or random animations, it's really, really cool to have a random number generator to be able Able to plug in and add a little variety to our animation. So this is all good to go ahead and run this so that it's imported into our sketch and we can see that some of our lights will come on as soon as we initialize the NeoPixel object. Now we have the object ready, but how do we write to it? Well, it's super easy. The NeoPixel is accessed kind of like a list. So we can say NP bracket zero, close bracket equals, and then a value. And this could be 255.00, which is all red because we have R, G, B, red, green, and blue. Or it could be something like 01280, which would be half green, R, G, B. So 128 is half of 255. So that would give us, or around half of 255, so that would give us about half brightness. You can see we have an, a couple other examples here of just setting the different NeoPixels in our strip all the way from zero to nine, because let's start at zero. And the final command is np.write. Now, as soon as we do np.write, it'll basically write all the changes. But until we do this command here, nothing will happen. So if I were to comment this out, I could go ahead and run this line and our lights don't change. But as soon as I add the np.write, then we should see our lights basically light up the way that we have them programmed here. So the first one is red, the next one is green, then we have blue, purple, green, and it goes from there. Awesome. So now we have lights, but how do we erase them? Well, we can write a little function in order to wipe these pixels anytime we want. And the way that we do that is to just define a function, def erase pixels, that's just the name I chose. And then after doing the open and close parentheses and a bracket, or I in range 0, 10, that's how many pixels we have, npi. So we're just saying the neo pixel in this loop. So in this, it'll be one, two, three, four, because we're doing it 10 times, equals zero 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 so we're basically running through this loop 10 times and we're setting each pixel to a value of red zero green zero blue zero so totally off then we write it and then we wait for two seconds so what that does is because the point two seconds is inside the loop it'll give us a nice wiping animation that will erase any lights that we have on the pixel and prepare it for the next animation so let's go ahead and run it now and see what it looks like there we go now of course we could do this instantly but by adding this time dot sleep point two and the 0.2 of the second delay between each pixel turning off really makes it kind of look nice. Now the next thing we're gonna do is set random colors on each LED. And this is where we're gonna start using a while true loop. Now you need to be careful with this because while true loops will not stop by themselves, they go on forever. So as soon as I run this, then I'm going to need to press the stop button up here in order to make it stop. And if I were to upload this code, I would need to go into the web REPL and press control C in order to stop it from running. Otherwise I might have issues uploading other code. Now I'm gonna run this and you can see the code is just saying for I in range 0, 10. So again, for 10 times going through all the NeoPixels, we're going to set the current NeoPixel in our loop to a random 
integer between 0 and 255 for each red, green, and blue. So by calling this randint function we created up here, we should be able to basically get a random number between the highest and lowest possible value that the NeoPixel can be. Then we will write it and then wait 0.2 before moving on to the next one. So what this should look like is setting each individual NeoPixel to a random color, waiting 0.2 of one second, and then moving on to the next one. So let's play this animation and see what it looks like. Now this is kind of nice. Because the colors are random and it's unlikely that they're going to be extremely high or extremely low, you get a kind of nice pastel color. And while this isn't very holiday-ish, it's really cool to be able to write a program that selects the colors randomly. Now let's go ahead and stop it and we'll go back. And instead of that, we're going to create random colors. We're going to create random colors backwards. Now this is just handy if you decide that you want your animation to run the other way. You can basically have the same loop, but just change it and have a negative step, so it's a step of negative one. You can see here if we don't add one then uh, the default is just one, but if we add another number in the for i in range, it'll basically say that I want to run this loop backwards. So then if I say from 10 to 0 and I am going in an increment of negative one, so I'm counting down, it'll basically run the same thing we did before, but backwards. So let's run it and see what happens. There we go. So we have a loop that's running the opposite direction. So as you can see, we now know how to create a loop that's going in one direction and a loop that's going in the other. But this isn't very holiday-ish yet. So let's go ahead and do some colors that would be a little bit more appropriate for the holiday season. So here we can see that we can just define a list and we can decide that we want all Christmas colors, all colors, so green, uh, blue, red, white, or just white and blue depending on the way we want our animation to look. Now this little piece of code will run forever because it has a while well true. And then for I in range 0, 10, so just normally stepping through all 10 different NeoPixels, it'll set the value to a randomly picked value from one of these lists. So it's gonna go into the list white blue and pick one of these four values because we're saying uh, basically index any one of these from zero to four random numbers. And it's going to pick this and set that to the color. It'll write it and then it's going to wait a little bit less than before, 0.1 of a second before moving on. Now what this should do is cycle through all the different colors in that list, but do it randomly. So this little bit of randomness makes it interesting and avoids repeating over and over and making your code or your animation boring. So let's go ahead and see if we can make these random white and blue Christmas colors basically pick randomly from our white and blue list as they go. So this animation is a little bit faster than the last one, and as you can see, it's actually random. We're not just picking random colors anymore, now we're using a random generator to actually pick between colors in a list. So we're saying, we'll pick any one of these four colors, you decide for me. And each time it goes through the list, it'll just pick one of those random ones. So if we want to stop this and really see it in action, we can change the list that it's sourcing from and instead go to all colors. And we should see the same animation, only now it's going to pick any one of red, green, blue, or white. When we run this, it's a little bit less holiday-ish, more Christmassy, I would say. But because it's a little bit more confusing, I might stick with either the Christmas colors or the white and blue colors rather than just having this because then this just kind of looks like a light show. Let's go ahead and stop this run and maybe take a look at the way we can create motion. Now, we're going to cover how to make a racing animation. And what that basically means is we're going to be turning a pixel on, then we're going to be flipping the one behind it off. So we create the illusion of a pixel running around in a track. Now I'm gonna keep the speed the same. So this one will be a little bit faster. And before I run this, I'm also gonna go ahead and go up to our erase pixels function and just run this so that we can turn off our pixels. There we go. All right, so let's make a racing animation. We'll create a while true loop and then go through all 10 again. And we're going to first address one pixel and set it to just something in our white and blue list. And then our second one will say the pixel before it, so uh, I minus one, is going to be set to off. So assuming that all the other ones are already off, this should take a pixel that's off, flip it on, and then when it moves on to the next one, flip it back off. And we should see a racing animation going around in a circle. So let's see if it works when we run it. Awesome. Now, of course, we can look to our, our example above if we want to make this run in the opposite direction or if we want to make it bounce back. But this is a really simple way of creating some motion and also some randomness so that we can make it so that this loop that's going doesn't always display the same colors. Now, for our final animation, let's go ahead and do a double racing animation. Now, this is the same concept as before, but we're going to be expanding it a little bit. So we're going to have two random colors instead of one. So we'll have two pixels on and then turn both of them off by having the one after it be automatically turned off as we go through the loop. Now that should suffice, let's take a look at whether or not this will work. 
There we go. And of course, we can expand this as much as we want. These are all the fundamentals and basics that we would need in order to do this. Now, if you decide that you really like a particular animation, then you can just go ahead and upload it using Ampy. I have a separate guide for this, but just so you guys can see where the information is if you want to do this, you can copy files to the board using this command with Ampy, which is just installed with pip3. What you'll do is you will put a file called boot.py. So once you have an animation you like, you can go ahead and write some Python code. And then in a terminal window, you'll need to add this command, put boot.py, and this should point to the location of boot.py, and then the serial port that you're connected to. Now I probably have a file called boot.py, so let's see if it just works. Although it may not because I'm also connected to Jupyter Notebook. Yep, so as you can see, if you're running a while loop or if you're connected to let's say Jupyter Notebook, you will need to disconnect before doing this, but this is the proper command to go ahead and put a file that you want to run forever on your microcontroller. So if you want to upload your animation and have it running continuously, just write a while loop into it, upload it using Ampy, and then again, make sure to use screen to connect to it and press control C to stop the forever running loop in order to upload any new code or just generally work with it because it can be difficult to run a while loop in the boot.py and interact with the device because it's constantly running that code and won't check to see if you're trying to interact with it by to upload a new file or, or do something like that unless you actually cancel the command that's running. Our MicroPython holiday lights are super easy to program. And on a short strip of 10 pixels like this, the response time should be relatively good. But you should be aware that there are some restrictions when it comes to, let's say, programming 300 pixels, because your animations will go super slow due to the limited memory on the ESP8266. Now, if you want to improve this, you have two options. You can either switch to Arduino, which is able to do this more efficiently, or you can actually just get a microcontroller that has more memory, like the ESP32. And that will make things go a bit faster. But again, at this point, you're kind of dealing with some of the limitations of MicroPython and how quickly it can update all of these pixels. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to pick up any of these components, or if you have any problems with this guide, you can check out the article linked in the description. If you have any ideas for upcoming episodes, send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.